Welcome to Sugar Baby Sundays. I am your host, D. Jarrett. I want to special. Uh, I want to specially thank you for tuning in, giving me your attention on this Easter Sunday. Happy Easter! Uh, apologies for the late start. Um, it was a whole bunch of technical difficulties we had to work through, but we here now, baby. So uh, with that, uh, without further ado, we are gonna start this show off. So Sugar Baby Sundays is a show where you could tap in to find your sugar daddy or sugar mama, and uh, basically the whole concept is sugar babies call into the show. They click the link right here on the side of the screen. Uh, it takes you to a waiting room. You have to allow your camera. Uh, it's the only way you could be on the show is if you share your camera. Once you share your camera, it uh, let me know that you're in the room. We go live together. I ask you a few questions. At the end of the questions, you show us what you're working with. And then you share your cash app Because we know the only real way to reach out to a uh, sugar baby is through a cash app Now tap that like button and share this, alright So, um, I have a special show planned for y'all today Um, last week We didn't get, uh, we didn't get uh, We didn't get people calling in I had a few people say that they were going to call in But they didn't show So this week we're a little bit more prepared So it's not going to be a bunch of dead space But I would like to share Some of the topics that I'm going to go over today um, It's going to be a real, real nice um, show for you guys here The first thing is uh, We're going to cover is Seven things a man shouldn't do with a woman That's highly, highly good information I have for you right there the next one we're going to cover is how older women signal to men that they want them to make a move. Because some of y'all don't know if she's telling y'all, like, come on with it. The next one is we're going to cover is how to increase your sex appeal as a man. I'm going to give y'all some tips out here because i um, been hearing in the streets of some of y'all lacking. So we're going to get y'all right out here. All right. And the next one is how to tell if she is into you. So we got a bunch, a bunch of useful information. And depending on how the time go, I may even share some stories with y'all as well. So without further ado, let's get into this first one. Seven things a man shouldn't do to attract a woman. All right. Number one, don't change your life to match someone else's. Uh, a lot of people out here try to keep up with the Joneses. That ain't the way to go. If, you know, if you meet a female, keep it 100 with her. <laughs> I seen a post that say, you ain't got a lot to a female. If she like you enough, she'll lie to herself. And that's 100% facts right there. If a female likes you, it don't matter what you got, where you live, none of that. If she like you, she gonna get with you. So you ain't gotta change, just be yourself. The next one is don't be obsessed with someone. When you are obsessed with someone, you lose your identity in, this, in, in the whole scheme of things. When you become obsessed with somebody, all you think about is that person, not none of the obligations or the things that you have to do. That's not a good thing. It's going to set you back in the long run. Never, never ever be obsessed with someone number three don't let nobody mess up your mental health mental health should be up there with your physical health those things are neck and neck and then the third one is gonna be your wealth but don't fellas we know we like the ones we, that's crazy sometimes and we all know the reason why but don't let that don't let her mess up your health. You shouldn't be dating no one that you gotta worry about if she gonna be busting out your windows, putting three of your tires on flat because the insurance ain't gonna cover if you got all if you got if you got three. They only gonna cover if all of them flat. So it meant to note if she flatten your tires, you better flatten that fourth one so your insurance will cover it. But you you don't have to be worrying about that, man. Your mental health is key and you need to keep that like that. Number four, do not isolate yourself from your friends and your family, right? Uh, when we meet somebody, yeah, a lot of times we tend to want to give them all of our time. But there's a difference in giving somebody all of your time 
and letting them isolate you from family and friends. Usually somebody that's doing that, they're controlling and the manipulators. That's a red flag. But if you notice somebody starting to, mani uh, to not manipulate, but separate you from the people that you care about, you need to, to pay attention to that. Don't deal with that person. They're doing it for a reason. Number five, don't give someone all your time. Time is valuable. If you got too much time, you ain't got no money. So if you're giving somebody all of your time, you're not freeing yourself to generate income, to spend time with your family, to spend time on building yourself. If you are constantly giving away all of your time, you will never have time for yourself or have time to be successful. Number seven, no, no, number six. Don't share everything about your past. Some things just need to be kept quiet, you know. Um, they don't need to have to know about the time you had to catch a bus from seven mile all the way out to wherever. No, nah, keep that to yourself. Some things just need to be for you. Because a lot of times if you share too much, sometimes people use that thing, that, that information against you. Even though they're supposed to love you, sometimes... It could get thrown up in the heat of the passion. You don't want to do that. So you don't want to overshare it. We're going to move to the next one. Seven. This is the last one, but I'm going to give you all a couple of bonus points. For don't agree to do something you don't want to do. Because if you agree to do something you don't want to do, your energy going to be off. As soon as you show up, you just like, when is it over? You, you're not even going to want to communicate with the person. The, the vibe just going to be off. So only do stuff that you feel that you want to do. Not feel, think. Just do it. You know, if you want to do it, do it. But if you don't, don't. Don't obligate yourself to something that you don't want to do. Now, these are the bonus. These are not if you're pursuing a woman. This is just for you, all right? Pay attention. Don't be afraid to be alone. Sometimes your greatest achievements is going to come to you. The thought of it will come to you when you're by yourself. You ever been in the shower and I'm like, dang, man, that's cold. I need to follow that. Or driving in the car. Now, another thing, too. Driving the car without the music on, you'd be surprised what your subconscious tell you. But don't be afraid to be alone. Here's why. Okay. Picture this. You on an island, and there's a boat on the next island, but you're with somebody, you're a great swimmer, but the person that's with you is not a good swimmer. So, would you say, hey, get on my back. We're going to go to this island together. Or would you, hey, I'm going to swim to this island and get this boat and come back for you. That's the power of being alone sometimes. Because when you try to bring somebody with you on your journey, sometimes it's not meant for you to meant for them to travel that road with you. And it end up hindering you. So you don't have to be afraid to be alone. Being alone sometimes is powerful. Next one. Celebrate your victories. You win. Don't let nothing. I don't care how small it is. You celebrate it. Don't let nobody steal your joy. If you got a new whip, share that new whip. If you got a new job, share that new job. Don't let nobody steal your joy. These things will make you more stronger. Because when you share your victories and you celebrate them, it programs your subconscious to give you more victories. All right? Those are them tips right there. Now, with that, I'm going to get back into that a little bit later. So this is Sugar Baby Sundays. The whole goal of this show is to link sugar daddies and sugar babies together. So what you do is you click this link right here, right? It's going to take you to a room. Once you're in that room, I'm going to see you when you're in that room. I'm going to grant you access to this live stream. I'm going to ask you a couple questions, real basic questions. You show us your talents, what you're working with. And at the end, you get to share your cash app. Because we really know the only real way to reach out to a sugar baby is through a cash app. So tap in. Click that like. All right. We're going to move it on to the next one. So 
the next thing I got prepared for y'all. Oh, yeah, make sure y'all share this, too, because after my show, I got a lot of people saying, oh, I want a sugar mama. I want a sugar baby. I want a sugar daddy. But none of y'all click that link. So we're going to have to have y'all click that link, tap in. We're going to get y'all somebody tonight, right? Because the more people that see this, the more money you make. All right, so let's move on. Let's tap in on how older women signal to men that they want them to make a move, all right? Number one, she shows interest by making eye contact. Eye contact is the very first sign. If you want to start learning how to date effectively, you got to learn how to use every body language. Eye contact is going to be the first sign. So if you're out and about with somebody, you out with the fellas and whatnot, you out at a bar, a lounge or whatnot, scan the room. Pay attention to the women that will look at you and then look away. That as soon as you see you looking, she looks away. That's the one you need to pay attention to. She likes you. That's her sign. That she's telling you that, hey, I'm, a, I'm open for you to come talk to me. Second one, the smile. Once she cracked that smile on you, man, you know <laughs> if she grins, you win. Number, th number three, she comes into your personal space. This is another big one. Pay attention, fellas. If you out and about with the fellas, y'all hanging out at the club, Watch how many females start to come around you. Those are the ones that like you. And here's how you can really tell if they like you. Post up in, in a spot in a room where there's not a lot of people standing. Just go over there, chill with you and the fellas. Y'all go over there. And then pay attention to the females that start to come in that vicinity. The ones that come in in that vicinity, those are the ones that like you and the bros. Come on, man. I'm dropping gems on y'all. Hit that like. So when she comes into your personal space, a lot of times she won't even say nothing. It's just standing right next to you or standing in front of you. Especially if she got them cakes, she's going to stand in front of you so you can see what she's working with. Next one is, uh, we're going to move on to the next point. Number four, she'll compliment you. If, if, if you didn't pay attention by now, y'all should be talking, right? She'll compliment you. She'll, you know, oh, man, you're really tall, or I like the cologne you're wearing, or you, I like your fashion sense, I like what you got on type of deal. If she's complimenting, she like you, you in there, player. Next one is uh, if she's asking you what do you do, that's a big sign, man. Uh, <laughs> it, number one sign, if she asks you what you do, that's another one, man. First off, man, if you to this point, you should already be in Baghdad. Y'all should be in a private spot communicating together. But, you know, some of y'all dense, we're going to make it simple for y'all. Uh, She's going to ask you uh, if you got a girlfriend and stuff like that. Here's another one. Uh, what females will do when they like you is the touch, man. Pay attention how she touch you. A lot of times, if she touch you at all, she likes you. But um, one of the, the, the one of the big things, like if you're out partying and stuff, and you're at a bar, pay attention to those chicks that be rubbing their breast up against you when they pass by. They do it, fellas. They do it. You may think that she bumping into you, but it's not really a bump. Uh, think about it. A female's breast is one of her protected areas. She's not rubbing them up against something just haphazardly it's a it's a reason for it i'm dropping these gems like this video i'm telling you all right with that being said that's that topic so we're gonna get back into it right here right right over here right that link right there that gives you access to the show if you want to find you a sugar daddy if you want to find you a sugar baby click that link we're gonna put you out there man we want y'all to successfully date because here's the thing with the um with the dating apps it's a lot of catfishing going on let's just be 100 but on this platform when they call in you get to see the whole vibe and it, you may you may be even 
able to tap in with it. But that's coming on a little bit later down the line. It's going to be called the Sugar Baby Sugar Daddy Tap In. But you get to see the whole vibe of the person. How they move, how they talk, how they carry themselves, what they working with. Because we know what the power of filters do on the pictures. They'll comp change somebody's complete look. So what you do is you click that link. We put you in that room. We get you on the show. We ask you a few questions. If you're a sugar baby, you share your cash app. If you're a sugar daddy, you share your contact information. We make it simple around here. So with that being said, we're going to move into the next topic here. All right. Let me check this here. See if I got any comments on here. All right, let's check out Facebook. See what we got. Here. <laughs> Make you hip. I got you, Brandon. Share that, like that for me, play. I like, I like that a lot. So we're gonna get you hip to all of the game here. So the next one, we're gonna uh, tap in for the fellas here. This one's for the fellas. I'm gonna show you ways to increase your sex appeal for women. It's ways that you could do it, man, without even saying a word. And this is how we gonna do it. Number one. The first thing that you can do to increase your sex appeal as a man, how you move, how you carry yourself. When you walk into a room, your presence needs to be felt. None of that slouching, none of that. Pace yourself too. Don't walk fast. Move slow, move with a purpose. Walk with your chest out, shoulders back. People pay attention. Whether you know it or not, they are looking at you. Number two, your car. Everybody know that what kind of whip you driving is the biggest flex. That is an instant turn up to your sex appeal. I don't care how, if you, <laughs> you could be a 400 pound dude, but he will still have a chick in the Escalade. Better believe it. Them fat dudes ain't buying them big trucks for nothing. I'm telling you. It's, they out here. Number three. That bank account. How much you make. Another thing, man. You don't have to look the best. But if you got them zeros behind your, no, behind your name with some commas too. Man, you can get whatever you want out here from these women. Bad chicks. Case in point, Jay-Z. That's all I'm going to have to say right there. <laughs> we moving on to the next one. Four, how you dress. Your swag when you step out is the number one factor when you're away from your vehicle of how a female spots you. Your accessories. Do you got chains on? Do you got diamonds bling in? Is your fit nice? Your shoes clean? That's all going to play a part in your sex appeal and raising it for a woman. You do some of these things, man, you have a lot of women in your arsenal. That's the whole goal if you're trying to find your sugar, uh, sugar baby. Now, here's the thing. Now, you have to know how to communicate with women. Uh, well, let me rewind. A lot of dudes pay for sugar babies because they can't communicate with women. But you watch this. I'm going to show you how to communicate with women. I'm going to show you how to present yourself to the world in a manner that's going to get you attention. Not the bad attention, but the good attention. Where was I at? Oh, the last thing on the list. Number five, cologne. When you walk past... And you got all of the things I just mentioned above. And you hitting it with a nice fragrance to follow up. Bruh, it's going to do wonders for you. I am telling you. So with that being said, if you got any good tips out of that, click that like for me. Help me out. This really helps the algorithm put this video in front of people that may need it. You don't know who need a sugar baby. You don't know who need a sugar daddy. But we're going to put them together on this show. So, with that being said, we're going to go over some more um, body language, all right? Uh, fellas, we're going to, how to tell if she's into you. And then a lot of these are going to be somewhat similar to what I covered earlier. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, an age on it, but we're going to go here with it. 
Number one, that eye contact. I'm telling you, pay attention to who is looking at you. If they're staring at you, they're looking at you for a reason. The longer they look at you, the, <laughs> the more they like you. You're not going to stare at nothing that you don't like for a long time. That's real. Number two, showing off parts of the body. So with this one, you have to be real attentive to body language. So I'm going to run through a few things that women do that that signals that they like you because as humans we communicate 80 percent 80 to 85 percent non-verbally the rest is through your words so if 15 percent of your words are only what's being communicated that means the other 85 percent you need to pay attention to so we're gonna kick it off with this body language so what does a woman do when she's feeling you first thing like I said is the eye contact next thing is going to be showing off the soft parts of her body um, you got the wrist palms of the hands the neck another big one is if she sits back and crosses her legs to show her thigh that's huge uh, the next one is going to be fixing herself She's going to adjust her clothes, fix her hair, because she wants to look the best presentable version of herself for the person that she likes. So pay attention to that. If you see a woman, she's doing this shit, fixing her shirt and, and playing with her hair, that's key. That's, that's one of the big tips right there, too. That's another one. The next one, we covered the exposing of the thigh. Ha <laughs> ha. This is this one gonna be a bonus one right here. Not a lot of people know this one. This one, if she starts playing with a plant with a pen player or her straw, you in there, bro. You in there. If she finds something that look like a pen or a straw, and she doing shit like this with it, and she putting it in her mouth, bro, you in there. You are in there because subconsciously, you have to think. What is the shape of that cylinder object? And y'all y'all sit there, I don't do that, I don't do that. It's a subconscious thing that we all do. We all communicate with our body language, whether we know it or not. It's hard for our body to agree with something that our mind doesn't agree with. For case and purpose, um, if people lie, they body gonna tell when they lie. Whether you know it or not, there's a few signs that you can look for. We'll get into that some other time, but pay attention to the body language. Next one, smiling, man. Like I said, if she's showing them teeth, if she, if she grins you in, that's another big one. And the last and most powerful one, like I said, touch. When a woman touch you, she ain't going to touch nothing that she don't like. She ain't going to touch nothing that she ain't comfortable with. So if she's laughing... She's playing with her hair. She's fixing her appearance. She on your head. Now the rest is up to you, play. You got to get that conversation game down pat. Don't mess it up, man, because a lot of y'all mess it up as soon as y'all open your mouth, man. As soon as y'all open your mouth, instant creep mode, man. We have to turn that off. Watch this, play. I'm going to get y'all right, man. No creep modes around here. We're going to show y'all how to interact with the women. We're going to show y'all how to get sugar babies. We're going we're gonna to cover all of that. So, uh, all right, let's see here. Let's get into some, let's see. Come on, y'all. I know y'all want to find some sugar daddies and sugar babies out here. I really know y'all do, because every time I turn this mic and camera off, oh, man. I want a sugar baby. I don't want a sugar mama. Well, tap that link. It's right here, right there in the corner. Well, this one, you can support the channel. Well, this one is the link. And that one right there, you can support the channel. Don't forget to support the channel. All right, so, uh, how long we been going at this here? I don't even care. We about to get into some stories. All right. Let's do some 21 sugar baby confessions. 
All right, while that load up there, I'm going to get into what this show is all about. Sugar Baby Sundays is a show for sugar babies and sugar daddies to connect with each other. It is a live streaming, live streaming dating show where sugar babies call in and they answer a series of questions. At the end of the series of questions, they show us what they're working with, their special talents, and at the end of the interview, they get to share their cash app. Because we know the only way you can communicate with a sugar baby is through a cash app. So, with that being said, we're going to kick this one off. We got 21 sugar baby confessions that'll give you a glimpse into the world of transactional dating. Alright, y'all ready? So, I was working four jobs. Then I got into my master's program. I knew I couldn't keep up with my crazy work schedule and study. So I started looking at other options. I talked to my husband. Mind y'all. Remember that part. I talked to my husband about an article I had found on Sugar Babies. And we both agreed on some limits and some safety precautions. I signed up for seeking arrangements with a fake name and a profile that actually, that accentuated all the quirky things about me. I had a lot of interest, but 99% of the guys were looking for a cheap escort. I spent a lot of time talking to potential daddies. I hate the term. It's so infantil infantilizing and creates a huge power imbalance. That's what the whole freaking thing is about. But anyway, I had some of the best meals and worst sex of my life. But it, I did at least get my tuition paid in full before my term started. It worked for me, but I don't recommend it in general. Oh, man, how do we unpack that? First off, why you even marry and you need a sugar daddy? That should be your sugar baby. Oh my gosh. So, buddy out here letting his wife get her cheeks ran for the dollars. And she talking about she don't want to be no escort, ma'am. You all. All right, we about to get into the next one. All right. I've been a baby. I've been a sugar baby for close to five years. I met my first sugar daddy on Tinder. And we've been happily together ever since. We've gone on trips to South Africa and Europe, eaten at luxury Michelin starred restaurants, and stayed in luxury hotels, spas, and resorts. I've received designer bags, mostly Gucci and Chanel, that top dog stuff right there. Had my rent paid, received a monthly allowance, and have been given many tech gifts Gaming desktops, gaming monitors, printers for college, iPad Pro, pen, Apple Watches. Okay, we get it, sis. He was looking you up. For one of my birthday presents, I received liposuction surgery. He paid the full eight bands. That's $8,000. He paid the full $8,000. I actually got the iPad Pro and the pen from another sugar daddy on our second date. Which blew my mind, quite honestly. Okay, she out here winning. She getting lipo. Uh, she getting the stuff. That's the thing about one of those type of arrangements. But see, here's the thing, man. Like I said last week, somebody ain't gonna pay no hundred bands for no two thousand and one Kia. Plain and simple. You gotta make yourself worth these type of investments. Uh, I, I can't say what they doing. They might be doing some something strange for some change. But somebody saw fit that they was worth paying eight bands to suck some fat out their body. All right, let's move on. All right. Uh, I honestly have not had the best experience. I think young women should be warned about trying to find a sugar daddy on the Internet. The websites that cater to people looking to enter a sugar relationship are populated with men looking for cheap sex and to manipulate younger women. And that's why I covered last week, you need to qualify your sugar daddy. Don't waste time if he ain't putting the bread up. I, I get, gave tips on last week's episode on how to qualify your sugar daddy. So back to where I was. I had one sugar daddy pay the full allowance 
we agreed upon for one month and then expected to keep seeing me to ke- then expected me to keep seeing him for far less because he said what we had was real <laughs> uh, you ain't qualifying because uh man by the time he paid that first month's allowance you should have known how much he was worth he should have been showing you what he was worth because a real sugar daddy ain't afraid to show what he want it's the ones that's pretending out here they just want to pay for sex that are gonna give you the hard time so if you do your qualifications right and you qualifying these dudes right you ain't gonna have to deal with this all right now what was up all right so Others tried to push my boundaries when it came to using protections. Always protect yourself. In general, a lot of these men are expecting tons of attention and emotional labor for very little. Again, qualify. I switched to advice advertising as high end. <laughs> All right, let's 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 let's. I'm going to read that one again. I switched to advertising as a high-end escort and have found my clients to be more respectful and generous than anyone I met on a, sug- on a sugaring website. Well, I mean, you were sleeping with them. There's a lot of sugar babies. They ain't out here smashing their sugar daddies. These young little 22, 23-year-old college students that got these nice little cars that's out here with nice outfits and in class players, pay attention. These little chicks that's out here taking these trips, but you don't never see who taking the pictures. All right, man. Put two and two together. All right, let's move on to the next one. In my early 20s, I was working full time, but still mostly broke after paying bills. I had met an older friend who was up and coming professional. Let's try that again because I said that real slow. I had met an older friend who was an up and coming professional and was still closeted because of his career. So he would often take me to fancy dinners and buy me nice clothes to wear out to functions where he would be networking. I wasn't interested in any serious relationship with anyone or settling down at that time. So he worked as a cover for me too. It worked out great for the both of us. He is now very successful, married to a woman. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let me try that again. So he's married to a wonderful husband and has two kids. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I misread something somewhere. I'm in my early 20s. I was working full time but still mostly broke after paying bills. I met an older friend who was an up-and-coming professional and was still closeted because of his career. Okay, so this is not the sugar baby. All right. Okay, all right. Yeah, y'all heard that. But anyway, like I said, a lot of these sugar daddies is not looking for, um, they're not looking for to have sex with them because some of them can't. They just got money and they need the companionship. It's, It's a lot of old dudes out here that is paying real bread for these young cats to just to chill with them. Real talk. Let's hear some more stories. Make sure y'all tap that link. Let me check to see if there's anybody in here. Because the whole goal of this show is to link up sugar daddies with sugar babies. Sugar babies, if you're looking for a sugar daddy, what you do is you click this link right here. It takes you to a waiting room. When you're in that waiting room, I will know that you are there. Once you are there, I grant you access to the show. I ask you a few questions. You show us your talents, what you're working with. And at the end, you get to share your cash app. Because we know the only real way to reach out to a sugar baby is through a cash app. Now click that like for me, all right? All right, so we're going to get back into these stories here, all right? What we got next? All right. This was my first and last sugar baby date. This should be good. I met a guy who was initially who initially told me he was six feet tall. He ended up being five five. Maybe he was counting the inches that he would get if he stood on his wallet. <laughs> if that, I could look past that. Height was not the issue. The issue arose when we went to a hotel and he wanted to smell my breath armpits in other areas no sex just sniffing 
If that's your thing, okay. But when I ask you beforehand what you're into, maybe mention it. He just told me he was into the basics. I made 300 and blocked him as soon as I left. Yeah, right. If he hit your line again, you going you I, you gonna be up in that room like this. I guarantee three hundred for a motherfucker to sniff, sniff your armpit. Yeah, she ain't block him. All right, next one. I never really had a sugar daddy or a mama. They all scammed me, and I never received actual money from them. They were fake and asked me for money when it was their job to pay me. Well, first off, ma'am, you wasn't qualified. The fuck? So, first off, if you are meeting a sugar daddy, he claims to be a sugar daddy, y'all need to have a video conversation. Via Skype, chat, FaceTime, you name it. There's plenty of ways you can video chat somebody without giving out your contact info. On that, you need to relate to that man what your allowance is. And it, it has to be obtainable for you. Because don't be coming out here with that. Oh, my allowance need to be 40000 a month. You're going to be by yourself and broke. So come up with a sustainable allowance. My suggestion is make your allowance your expenses for the month. That's going to be your rent, your cell phone, car payment. And if you want to get a nails done, add all of those up, boom. That's going to be your allowance. Because the whole point of the sugar daddy is so you can live the soft life. So, with that being said, we're going to move into the next one, all right? Make sure y'all qualify these dudes because they're going to waste your time if you don't. All right. I'm a bit spicy. I'm, I'm a bit... <laughs> okay. One more time. I'm a bit of a spicy sugar baby. My arrangement is with a wealthy, submissive sugar daddy. And that's when a lot of them... Are going to be submissive dudes. These are guys. Because let me look at it. There's two type of people out here that make money. There's your extroverted people. That are very charismatic. And then there's your introverted people. That are really, really socially awkward. So what a lot of these people do is. They have functions that they go to. And they need somebody to accompany them on these functions. So what they will do is go on to a website such as Seeking Arrangements or SugarDaddy.com. There's a bunch of them. I shared them last week. So go check that video out. So they go on those websites looking for an arrangement for a date. Afterwards, well, I don't say afterwards. Before that date, they should be video chatting. They should be communicating. They should know all of the person's kinks. Because it's gonna sh it's, it's gonna save you time when you have that first interaction, just like the the armpit lady. Yeah, he should have told her that so that way she wouldn't have been caught off guard. Um. Okay, back to what I was saying. Much of what we do is the same companionship. Hold on, no, 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 no. I missed the line. Uh, we met through a sugar baby website. Like I said, my profile stood up because I'm a, a, an a, aspiring dominatrix. Much of what we do is the same. Companionship, shopping, allowances, etc. What's special about the BDSM aspect? What's special about us is the BDM aspect. I'm his dom and he's my submissive. He wants me to own, control, and dominate him. I'm happy to oblige. We play out this consensual kinky dynamic through scenes, rules, and tasks. There's something deeply satisfying and empowering about dominating an entitled old white man as a 25-year-old woman. Get your power, sis. <laughs> I think I like them. I like to think I'm balanced out the patriarchy and oh my gosh what is going on i like to think i'm balancing out the patriarchy and redistributing the wealth shout out to robin hood all right with that being said like i said this show is to link people together with their sugar daddies and sugar babies you click this link right here it takes you to a waiting room 
Once you're in that waiting room, I can see you're in there. I will bring you onto the show. We ask you a few questions. At the end, you show us your talents, what you're working with. You share your cash app, and then we keep it moving. All right, make sure y'all share this too, because the more people that come on, and the more people that are watching, the more you make. So with that being said, we're gonna jump right back on into some of these sugar baby stories. All right, because let's find us a good one here. Are you sugar baby on that? I need to ask you my guys. All right, let's check this one out. We're going to jump back into this one. Right, so. While that loads, in the chat, where y'all contacting? Where y'all are? Where y'all watching me at from in the chat? I see people watching. <laughs> hey, shout out Zalika. I see you. Shout out Bian uh, lovely Bianca. I see you. Thank y'all for tuning in and giving me y'all time for this evening. But what we need is a sugar baby on this show. I know you know somebody that's looking for a sugar daddy. Tell them to tap in because we about to get them somebody right here. All right. So next one is, has anyone had any experience being a sugar baby or a sugar daddy? If so, what do you think? Yes, I have been a sugar daddy for many years. It's just like having a girlfriend except you don't meet her parents. And it's a bit more expensive to maintain than a normal girlfriend, but cheaper than a wife. <laughs> with, a good, with a good match, it is really great. My sugar babies have loved it too. One graduated from college with no debt thanks to me. One became a lawyer thanks to me. I got two of them career jobs through my connections. See, this is the thing. When you're young and you're in college, you need to be leveling up. Because these years go by fast, ladies. You don't want to be looking up and you 40 and you don't have nothing to show for your younger years. There's countless women out here that's, they done hit that wall and it's real hard for them to find somebody. So what you can do is level up. And by the time you're in the space, you have become so good at working with people and dealing with different type of personalities. When it's time for you to meet the one that you really like, you know how to communicate with that person. All right, so let's keep it moving. Uh, my experience is not something realistic. All right, hold on. My experience is not something realistic to expect from a sugar arrangement. I was just lucky. I think it's important to bring it up. Moreover, I didn't use apps where women get treated like me. Yeah, you're going to run into dudes that want to just smash when that's all they want. They don't want no sugar baby. They want a hoe. So that's why it's important to qualify the sugar daddy. There's easy ways to tell it. If he ain't comfortable with paying your allowance just for you to be in his presence, then that's not no sugar daddy for you, sis. All right, so... Uh, I met my sugar daddy when I was working at a car dealership. We had an event, and that's when the boss's boss was introduced to me. He was attractive, well-spoken, and there was something about him I instantly liked. He kept initiating eye contact and later started asking about my career goals. That's another sign, too. If a guy is asking you what you want out of life, and he's trying to add to that and help you get there, you need to pay attention to that. I won't go into the details of how we met again, but after that time, we decided that a sponsor relationship would be great. He is busy, has a wife. Yes, the majority of those men are married. Unfortunately, that is the case. I visited seven countries, got a condo, lots of jewelry, expensive pieces of art, and expensive pieces of art. That's what you should put there. It was great. But the best thing was the connection that allowed my career to go forward. Not only that, he funded two of my businesses that are currently making me good profit. Man, um, if y'all didn't watch, uh, what was that uh, show? Uh, 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 oh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, that white chick, what was her name? Uh, Kim. She had a whole dude named Big Papa. We never seen what Big Papa looked like, but Big Papa cut a check for her to get an Escalade. Sent the check. She just drove off. Say I'm playing. It's real stuff going on out here like that. 
And she ain't no dime. She wasn't no dime. You don't have to be a dime. You just got to know how to communicate with these gentlemen. And we're going to show you how to do it on this on this platform here, too. So, uh, what did this say? So, two years later, he divorced his wife and proposed to me. Ooh. Ooh. Dang. That's, that's messy. I declined. He is 16 years older than me. Although he is good looking, he is a good looking man whose generosity is indeed lovely. I'm not interested in legally bounding myself to him. He is no longer my sugar daddy. I bet he's not. Why the fuck would he want to be? He 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 he, didn't, he called his wife and look here, toots. I'm not coming back no more. <laughs> He's no longer my sugar daddy as I don't need one. Yeah, okay. But still mentors me about business. We discuss our politics, play tennis, and I enjoy his company now. And that's friends only. He's still smash. All right. Next one we got here. About two years ago, I met a young lady at, a, at my gym. She was 18 at the time, and I was 40. And married. Crazy. My marriage is, is, is essentially sexless. I was tired of my wife shutting me down all the time. I love her, but I need sex as well. Balls full as fuck. Anyway, Becky, <laughs> Becky and I hit it off really well. We would talk the entire hour I was at the gym nearly every day. I would like to tell you that she's smoking hot, but she's not. Told you. She's a bit above average, but fun to talk with. Told you. You don't have to be the best looking chick out here. You just got to know how to carry yourself. One day after my workout, she asked me to take her home. I was more than happy to, as we have become pretty close friends. I ended up driving her home several more times. And then one day she asked me if I wanted to come in. Oh, man. Here you go, player. So... I knew it was wrong, but a part of me wanted the adventure, and I hadn't had an adventure for so long, because his wife had that nigga balls full as fuck. So I did, and yes, one thing led to another. I like her, but I would not I would not say I love her, but I do help her with her college tuition and gas and money nowadays. She got a car. I guess she, she ain't had no wheels. It's been two years and she helps keep me happy and I help keep her happy. That said, at some point, it's going, ha it's going to have to end. I don't plan on leaving my wife and she is eventually going to need to find someone else to take care of her. Probably because she's starting to get expensive for you. But at least for now, I still go to the gym if you know what I mean. We know what you mean. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Uh, let me take a break to read some of these comments here. Let me see. Uh, Alright. Let's keep it moving then. Next one. Okay, so you don't have to have sex with your, your arrangement. Let's let's just put that out there. You really don't. Uh, there's a lot of older dudes that it don't work no more. Or they just don't want to. They just want something nice on their arm when they go to an event. Because there's a lot of successful individuals that aren't attached to no one. And they do have functions that they have to go to. And it helps when they have a plus one on their arm that's nice looking. So they will make an arrangement for you to go with them. And that's a start. So, like I said, when you meet a sugar daddy, you need to qualify this man. This man needs to... All right, let's first start. When you meet a sugar daddy, you have to qualify him. And the ways you can qualify him is through your video call. First thing on a video call, you need to introduce yourself. You have to show him... That whatever that number that you about to hit him with is worth it. Don't be on there with no bonnet. Don't be on there in no moo moo. Put your shit on. Put your fucking dress on. Call him up. Let him know what his uh, what his investment is gonna be. And if he's a cool, if he agrees to then that, 
Oh my goodness If he agrees to it Send him your cash app You bless your cash app For that one month allowance We went over how you tabulate Your allowance If you never did it before The things that you should cover Is your rent All your living expenses Rent Utilities Car payment And food Add those things up That should be your starting allowance If you are living beyond your means And you want somebody else to foot that Nah You should be able to afford your allowance on your own Because you never know when your sugar daddy is going to end It happens all the time Dude wife probably will find out And then boom you cut off So With that being said We're going to move into some more stories I highly recommend it Of course I wasn't the hooker kind Which is most important to confuse sugar babies to be I had one sugar daddy And he took care of my every need during college during During my college years In return I did all the things that his wife didn't want to do Sound like it was some uh, Gawk Gawk 3000 action going on Such as going on business trips And weekend getaways, shopping No man want to go shopping He going shopping because he want to smash Seeing Broadway shows Oh man, I don't know, he might have been I'm going to just keep it to myself I highly recommend it If it's a real sugar baby, sugar daddy relationship I'm a sugar daddy with around five years of dating experience. What is it like? Well, it's a learning experience for sure. It takes time, effort, and patience to be on the sugar dating websites. For every 20 sugar babies I talk to, I might find one that actually wants to meet in person. The rest are scammers, online only, just seeking attention, or quickly cancel their profiles. Many will respond a few times and then go silent. Consistent communication is a major issue. A lot of these chicks is just really not. See, here's the thing. If you're going to be a sugar baby, you got to be a sugar baby. Don't go on there and make a profile and have these dudes reaching out to you and you're not serious about it. But that's why you need to tap into the show because all the people that's on this show want a sugar daddy or sugar baby relationship. So click that link right here we got. Okay, so where was I? Uh, Life is not easy for any of us. That said, I feel the sugar babies often have experienced a difficult childhood and are difficult circumstances. Bro, what did you get into the whole therapy session for? This sugar dating blog shows what sugar babies can be like. The sugar daddy and sugar baby will be left wondering whether anything in the relationship is real. It's not real. It's an arrangement. And see, that's the thing. You have to con- you have to compartmentalize it. For the guy, don't fall in love with your sugar baby. For the girl, don't fall in love with your sugar daddy. It is a paid arrangement. The moment y'all cross them lines is when the problems arise. All righty. Next one. Ooh. My wife was a sugar baby for a year and a half and it was a pretty positive relationship for three for the three of us. What is with these dudes? So y'all so let me know in the chat. Y'all cool with just pimping your wife out like that? Cause that's what you're doing at the end of the day. You might as well just put her on the track. Let me start from the top. My wife was a sugar baby for a year and a half. And it was a very positive relationship for the three of us. I will give you some background. He said, he spelled R O U N D. Let's try that. I will give you some background. I am much older than my wife, and a medical problem left me with ED. The thing don't get up no more. That's what that ED stands for erectile dysfunction. That had no remedy, so he couldn't even take a Cialis, a blue pill, none of that. That's tough. Having a younger wife who loves sex and is at the peak of her sexual life is a problem. Fingers, tongue, and toys were not a solution. She needed her back cracked. After a lot of investigation and thought, we decided that she should become a hot wife. 
Rather than having a single boyfriend, which could cause emotional complications, we decided to find guys on Craigslist. Whoa. And it worked pretty well, except for the logistics and risk. Craigslist, they still do that nowadays? Craigslist still around? When was this? Two years ago. Damn, this time now. That wasn't even that long ago. My wife decided that she should find a single friend with benefits that could be an exclusive relationship. Ooh, that's tough, man. God damn. She walking in, she just got her back blew out. She still leaking. Oh man, that's difficult, player. Alright. Uh be exclusive. And they <laughs> let me read this from the top because that just got real real sticky icky. My wife decided that she would find a single friend with benefits that she could be an exclusive be in an exclusive relationship and they would not use condoms. Ew. It turned out that we found a person looking for the same thing. However, this person, man, they must have typed this shit on their phone. However, he will be a sugar daddy. Being paid for sex was totally unacceptable for my Mexican wife. Was the, okay. And after much consideration, they decided that he would pay her not to have sex with any other men. <laughs> okay. He was a very wealthy man from India. It worked out very well for the three of us. They got the sex they wanted, including no condoms. And she was much safer than strangers from Craigslist. And much less time devoted and much better logistics. Uh, that, that just threw me all off. I believe that he was afraid of developing feelings for her and said me... And said to me, she is your wife, but she is my whore. <laughs> Ooh. He enjoyed using that word. And I think it was that was his reason. He enjoyed calling me to thank me for allowing him to fuck my wife and, la and elaborate on her skills and details. He's like, boy, I know your wife. They call her Jobo. <laughs> After three months, he asked me if I could take if he could take her to India for a month, and offered a ton of cash. Boy, he ain't gonna see your wife again. He gonna take her over there and bury her somewhere. I said that I didn't have a problem with it. All right, but that is, but that it was my wife's decision. He sent her home with a set of butt plugs and asked me to insert them so that he could fuck her in the ass. This is this story is out of control. Again, I said that I that would be her decision. He just said just 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 plug her in, stuff it up in her. She admitted that she had developed feelings for her. Oh man, you done lost your wife, bro. She ain't coming back. She gonna be over there painting dots on her head, on forehead and putting henna tattoos on her arm, bro. It's a wrap. Again, I said that that was her decision, man. You, you one weak brother, man. You need to grow up back, bro. At the year and a half mark, he lost his visa and had to return to India. And he has offered a ton of money for us to come over to India. My wife said no. I wish he had not lost his visa. I think you secretly got his visa revoked, bro. I really do. I really think he called, like, what, the, what they call an embassy or something? Y'all let me know in the chat. My wife convinced our daughter to become a sugar baby, and she loves it? What, though? Good day, sir.